Hello everybody, Toronto here, and today we are going to take a look at yet more British tanks that I think should be added to War Thunder. This is part 3, so if you haven't seen the previous episodes, I recommend you watch them as well, the links for which can be found in the description below, where we have already covered the Covenanter tank, TOG 2, A20 heavy tank and many more, including the Churchill NA75, which has since been added to War Thunder. The first British tank we're going to be looking at today is the Vickers Medium Mark II. As the name suggests, its predecessor was the Vickers Medium Mark I, which was put into service in 1924, and was the first modern tank used by the British Army in any large numbers, and helped start the process of replacing the old World War I style tanks like the Mark V and Whippet tank. It was also the first modern tank produced in large numbers by any nation in the aftermath of World War I, being far better than the French FT-17s and more numerous than the Char 2Cs then in service in the French army, thus giving Britain a definite edge in tank development at the time of its construction, at least until the development of the Japanese Type 89. The Mark I was soon replaced in production by the Mark II, though the two tanks are somewhat similar. It should also be pointed out that there were many variants of the Mark II, though for today I will be primarily covering the initial production variant of the Mark II. For its main armament, the Mark II was fitted with the Ordnance Quick Firing 3 pounder Mark II, which was a 47mm gun and would be rather unique in the British tank tech tree in that it would have access to an APHE shell rather than the solid shot of other British guns. It is also already implemented in War Thunder as the main armament of the A1E1 independent tank, where it has a maximum penetration of 38mm at 500m, a decent performance in the very low tiers, and of course comes with much greater killing power than its solid shell firing counterparts. It should be noted that some sources do mention that it could fire solid shot and HE shells, but in game it only has access to the APHE shell, and to be honest I suspect that would be the main shell used by players if given the choice. Additionally, the Mark II is officially armed with two 7.7mm Vickers machine guns, and four 7.7mm Hotchkiss machine guns, giving us a rather ridiculous six machine guns for anti-infantry defence, with the two Vickers machine guns being mounted on each side of the hull, and the Hotchkiss machine guns being mounted throughout the turret, with one being in a somewhat coaxial position. However, it would seem that there were only three ball mounts for the Hotchkiss machine guns, so the fourth was presumably used as a spare, or was carried so it could be dismounted for use outside the tank. It should also be noted that the secondary armament would be reduced to just three 7.7mm Vickers machine guns in later models but again with only one in a coaxial position and the other two on the side of the hull, so I suspect that only the coaxial machine gun would be usable if implemented in that fashion. Despite being a medium tank, the armour of the Mark II is extremely thin, with most sources showing a maximum thickness of 6.25 to 8mm, which seems to be absolutely insane, though this is helped in some areas by some decent usage of sloping. That said, most enemy weapons, including heavy caliber machine guns, will have almost no difficulty in penetrating the hull, which can be a bit of an issue when engaging with enemy tanks or even enemy SPAA, and is made more perilous by the fact that the petrol fuel tank is located within the crew compartment, increasing the risk and lethality of fire. Of course, one of the benefits of such thin armour is that the Mark II was lighter compared to the previous World War I tanks, and thus relatively speedy compared to those tanks, having a top speed of 15 miles per hour or 24 kilometers an hour, which is derived from a 90 horsepower V8 petrol engine. This is a decent enough top speed, though it is slower compared to light tanks and later medium tanks. Lastly, the crew of the Mark II was five, which seems to have consisted of a driver in the hull, the commander and gunner in the turret, and two crew members to man the machine guns though perhaps one of the machine gunners could assist as a loader if required. It should also be noted that some variants of the Mark II had what is called a Bishop's Mitre on the roof at the commander's position, making it a rather obvious target for the unfortunate commander, 
though the initial Mark II didn't have this fitted. The medium Mark II, despite being one of the more prolific tanks of the British Army in the interwar period, didn't see a huge amount of action, and was all but withdrawn from service by World War II, though some were brought back into service in 1940 in case of a German invasion of Britain. Curiously, there were still two in service in Egypt at the time of the Italian invasion, and these were supposedly involved in the defence of Mertz and Matru, though at least one of these was dug in and used as a bunker, and ultimately this was the Mark II's only combat service in World War II. So where could the Ficus Medium Mark II go in War Thunder? I believe the Mark II would make a good reserve tier tank, or could possibly go at a better rating below 1.0 much like how I envision other World War 1 and interwar tanks being implemented in War Thunder, which I definitely need to do a video on at some point. It could also be placed in the heavy tank lineup before the Stuart 1, allowing for more effective lineups in Tier 1, while being unique in its ability to use APHE shells, making the Mark II more user-friendly to new players due to its ease in killing targets compared to its counterparts with solid shells. Overall, while the Mark II does have some undesirable traits, I think it would be a rather interesting tank in War Thunder, and I would like to see this somewhat forgotten British interwar tank brought to the attention of more people, and I think it would be a great addition to War Thunder. We now come to the AEC Mark I 6 pounder gun carrier Deacon, which was a British attempt at building a truck based self propelled gun on the Matador truck for use in the North African campaign giving much better mobility for the 6 pounder guns that were then in use. Despite being less famous than the Achilles, Archer and other British self-propelled guns, the Deacon was the first purpose-built tank destroyer to go into service with the British Army, which started from 1942, while the aforementioned vehicles had to wait until 1944 to see active service. So while the Deacon could be seen as worse than those vehicles, it was at least in service and able to be used, which is a massive plus point in my opinion. The main armament of the Deacon was the 57mm 6 pounder gun, which was smaller than the later 76mm 17 pounder gun, as used on the later tank destroyers, but was still very deadly, with a maximum penetration of 101mm at 500m, with the Mark IX APCBC shell making this a rather deadly weapon in the anti-tank role, though again held back by the fact it only fires solid shot shells. Unfortunately, the Deacon has no other armament fitted, making it a sitting duck against enemy aircraft or soft skin vehicles that have managed to get in close, though this is a trait shared with pretty much all truck-based tank destroyers. Armour is surprisingly decent compared to other truck-based tank destroyers, with the armour ranging from 6 to 20 mm, which is more than on the previous entry, the Vickers Medium Tank Mark II, and it does seem to cover the driver position as well. While the gun shield is much more substantial than on other tank destroyers, completely covering the front, sides, and partially covering the roof, making this seem more like a truck mounted turret when compared to the other truck based tank destroyers, which often have open mounts with a tiny gun shield and some don't even have that for protection. Despite this, due to being based on a truck, the Deacon will still be rather easy to destroy compared to tank based designs, and its armour should not be relied on, although it should fare a little better than the other truck based tank destroyers. Unfortunately, the Deacon doesn't have the best speed in the world, with its 95 horsepower diesel engine giving it a top speed of 19 miles per hour or around 30.5 kilometres an hour which of course will be made worse when used off-road, and this does somewhat limit your options, though it should perform pretty well when driven on-road. I've seen some disagreements on the number of crew, with some sources stating that there was four crew members, which would consist of a driver in the driving position, and the gunner, loader and commander manning the gun, while some other sources state that there was five crew members, though I'm not sure what that crew member would be doing on the Deacon, Presumably, they would have been filling the role of another loader, but again, like I say, I, I haven't found any confirmation on that. Despite 175 of these vehicles being produced and seeming to be successful, they were deemed obsolete after the North African campaign, leading to some being converted to ammunition carriers and the rest being given to then neutral Turkey. So where could the Deacon go in War Thunder? 
whereas a truck-based tank destroyer, it would be somewhat unique in the British tank tech tree, as Britain doesn't currently have any truck-based vehicles in the early tiers, but I could see this fitting in at around battle rating 2.3 to 2.7, which is similar to the Soviet Su-57, with its placement probably being between the Daimler Mark II and the Achilles. Overall, I think this would be a rather unique vehicle for the British tech tree, and even unique compared to other truck-based tank destroyers, due to it being much more heavily armoured, while also possessing the excellent 6-pounder gun, though it is somewhat let down on the mobility front. But I think players could still use it very successfully, and it would be nice for this somewhat forgotten tank destroyer to get its chance to shine in War Thunder. The next vehicle we're going to be looking at is the AEC Mark III Armoured Car, which is the successor of the already in-game AEC Mark II. The AEC Mark III differs from its predecessor in that its main armament is the Ordnance Quick Firing 75mm gun instead of the Ordnance Quick Firing 57mm 6-pounder gun. Of course, the 75mm gun has worse penetration characteristics, with a maximum penetration of 89mm at 500m with the M61 APC-BZ shell, compared to the 110mm at 500m with the 57mm Mark IX APC-BZ shell. In addition, due to it being a larger shell, it will have a longer reload rate, which based on the Cromwell 1 and 5, will likely be 6.5 seconds for the 75mm gun, compared to 5.2 seconds for the 57mm gun. However, the 75mm M61 APC-BZ shell has a mass of 6.53 kilograms, compared to the smaller 57mm APC-BZ shell's 3.23 kilograms. So in theory, the larger shell should cause more damage in the event of a penetration, though of course, being a solid shot shell, this will still be worse than other nations' shells with explosive filler. In addition to the 75mm gun, the AEC Mark III has one 7.92mm Besser coaxial machine gun, while some sources do mention an additional 7.7mm Bren gun for anti-air defence, though I'm unsure if this would be fitted in-game, as the AEC Mark II already in-game does not have it, and the Bren gun would be severely limited by its 30-round box magazine. Armour as to be expected is rather thin, with a maximum thickness of 30mm, with the thickest point likely to be around the gun mantlet, like on the AEC Mark II, though the use of sloping at the front of the vehicle does help maximise the amount of protection given. Speed is also pretty decent as to be expected from an armoured car, with the Mark III's 158 horsepower diesel engine giving it a top speed of around 41 miles per hour or 66 km an hour which allows for rapid deployment and manoeuvring across the battlefield, as well as allowing for quick escapes and retreats from dangerous situations. Lastly, the crew complement is four, consisting of a driver in the hull and the gunner, loader and commander situated in the turret. Of course, we now have to answer the question of how to implement the AEC Mark III, as the AEC Mark II is an event vehicle, while the only other British armoured car, the Daimler Mark II, is a regular vehicle, while of course the South African subtree has many armoured cars. Personally, I think the AEC Mark III will perform worse than the Mark II, and as such, I think the Mark III should be placed at Tier 2, around battle rating 2.3 to 2.7, between the Daimler Mark II and the Achilles Tank Destroyer. This would allow Britain to have another armoured car on its regular tech tree, while giving British players access to a non-South African armoured car, which is capable of performing scouting work while still being a viable threat on the battlefield. And honestly, I'd just like to see Britain get some armoured cars in its regular tech tree, because like I say, we've only got the Daimler Mark II at the moment. So that's it for this episode looking at British tanks I would like to see added to War Thunder. I'd like to hear in the comments your views on these vehicles, and also what other British tanks you would like me to cover. I look forward to reading your comments below. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video, Hopefully you'll join me for future videos. I've been Toreno and I'll see you next time.